Ladies and gentlemen, the October 2021 Q&A is finally here. Hey, what is going on everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. So, the October Q&A is finally here, thankfully. And I know it's a little late in comparison to uh, what the original set goal was, but, you know, my cat actually did get ill. He was not doing well. Scared me. But uh, luckily, it wasn't anything serious. He's doing better now, and I couldn't be more grateful for that. So, he's doing great. He's eating again. You know, he's happy. He's energetic like he used to be. So, he's good, and that's great. You know, I couldn't be happier to see that he's doing well again. So, that's awesome. Also, after this video, there will be a few more going up within the next few hours. So, expect more content to go up today. We got a lot to go over, and uh, one of them is going to be extremely hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do a lot of research into this, but it's going to be a really funny video. You'll see what I mean when it goes up. But before we get started, if you have any questions for the November Q&A, please be sure to leave them in the comment section down as always. If there is any that I have forgotten, be sure to let me know. I will get them in the next Q&A. So be sure to let me know because, you know, there have been a couple of times that I've forgotten, uh, but I made sure to get them in the next Q&A. So let me know and I'll get them in the next one. Uh, I do appreciate your questions as always, and I'm always glad to answer them. So make sure to let me know uh, if I may have missed any, and I'll get them in the next one. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, starting with the YouTube questions. So first off, Elizabeth McGaden asked, how did you react to Sora and Smash and thoughts on the DLC as a whole? So, uh, Sora, you know, honestly, I didn't really care. <laughs> like... You know, uh, not to say that I wasn't happy for people who were looking forward to him being in the game. I just, I was like, eh. Uh, it was just kind of mad to me. Um, so, but hey, you know what? You know, more power to everybody who was excited for that. Uh, you know, glad for you. Uh, the DLC was good. Like I said, my, my favorite that came out of this one was Sephiroth and, uh, you know, uh, Pyra and Mithra. They, they so much fun to play as. Uh, but yeah, uh, I will definitely say that uh, the DLC wasn't bad. Overall, I mean, I thought it was pretty good, but that's just me. But yeah, good question. Uh, Andrew Rogers asked, Obviously, the Rogers is fucking up majorly now. This is talking about Ruby in the, the last one uh, that somebody had asked. Uh, but how interesting would... Which, by the way, he's right. <laughs> the Rogers screw it up. They always do. Uh, that's why Ruby's a complete shit show. But how interesting would a World War One style Ruby uh, story be during the Great War? Think a massive anti-war message with historical reference to World War One and how huge the battles would be, like Battlefield One, but in Ruby. I mean, if they did it right, I mean they could make that actually really cool. It would be good for lore if it was written well. It could add to a lot of things and you know actually patch up some holes in the history. So yeah, no, I mean it would be cool if they could do it right. But yeah, good question. Uh, Gene Gomez asked. Uh, here, a question for the next Q&A. Who are your top 10 DC waifus? Oh, and, uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, starting off uh, at the lowest on the list would be Harley Quinn. Now, here's the thing about Harley Quinn. I like her when she's with Joker. Because that's when her character's at her best. I mean, when she's on her own, my biggest problem is that she's basically Deadpool. And it just feels like she's not her own character. It just feels like she's a ripoff of Deadpool. When it's like they could try to make her, you know, her own character. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Harley Quinn, when she's with the Joker, is is my favorite version of Harley Quinn, really. Um, Power Girl is uh, another one of my favorites. Power Girl, think about her is, is that there was always this running gag in the comics for Power Girl. And they always tried to make her breast bigger. <laughs> it's like a competition of how much they could do. It was actually kind of funny, but uh, Power Girl... It's definitely another one that's one of my favorites from DC. Back when DC, you know, was good and fun, but you get my point. Uh, and then Barbara Gordon is another one that was uh, one of my favorites. She was a really smart character, and, you know, of course, later on she became the Oracle. And did a lot for Batman, you know, outside of the field, you know what I mean? So, she was a good character. I, I did like Barbara Gordon. Uh, then Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy is actually uh, one of the better villains, in my opinion. Definitely a good Batman villain, a woman that you didn't want to mess with. And while she definitely had a you know, great sex appeal and a wonderful bod, thing is, you didn't mess with this woman. <laughs> she would make sure you screwed her over. No, it wouldn't happen. She'd screw you over instead. <laughs> I mean, good villain. 
uh, Giganta, you know, Wonder Woman villain. Uh, now, this is a woman like, uh, she'd rock your world. <laughs> but uh, I will always like Giganta. In fact, she's actually my favorite Wonder Woman villain. Uh, but that's just me. But yeah, Giganta, definitely another one that's one of my all-time favorites. Uh, now, Killer Frost, this is a woman that would leave you for dead. <laughs> she just frees you over. Wouldn't matter. Also, she was a Suicide Squad member, uh, which I actually liked her when she was a part of the Suicide Squad. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, then, Black Canary. Black Canary is one of, in my opinion, the best girls in DC, period. Uh, her also being able to screech, just <laughs> destroy your ears. But certainly something. Seeing her fights, she's good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, great character overall. Uh, definitely one of my all-time favorite DC characters. Now, Starfire. You know, Dick Grayson's wife, and also the mother of Nightstar, which we don't we don't talk about the the, the ogre that she had. That that's not real. That never that never happened. We we don't talk about that. But she's one of the kindest characters ever. Tamaranian, you know, uh exposed herself a lot. You got to see that sexy bod of hers because she got power from the sun. Good excuse to be able to uh, expose herself. And there were times where she would be completely nude, by the way. Um and then uh, Raven Raven is actually my favorite Teen Titan member, like, overall, and one of my all-time favorite characters, period, in all of DC. Uh, you know, her, her father, Trigun, you know, the, the whole struggle she had with that, uh, excellent character. They even did her well in the cartoon Teen Titans, you know, 2003 animated one. Great. Zaytana, though, she is probably my favorite. Zaytana is so good of a character. She works alongside Dr. Fate, uh, and... All the magical hijinks that, you know, she can go through, it's fun. Like, she is probably one of the most fun characters when you read her stories. Like, they're just good. When DC, you know, is doing good stuff. But you get my point. Excellent character and great sex appeal. But, uh, yeah. Uh, good question, man. Uh, Fate is Fallen Ask, what are your thoughts on Azur Lane? Now, Azur Lane, uh, I've gotten a little bit into it. I haven't uh, had enough time to jump into it fully, but... I played a little bit of Azur Lane, and I do like it. Uh, I find it enjoyable, uh, fun, and this is coming from somebody who, you know, loves Kantai Collection, so, you know, like, I do like Azur Lane from the little bit I've played. Uh, do you have a favorite ship girl, Laffy, uh, for me? Uh, I do, so far. Um, I do like uh, Taiho. Uh, she, I love her design. She is good. I really enjoy her. And then, uh, you know, I'm just going to throw in Kantai Collection. Uh, Nagato. From Kantai Collection. I, I adore that character. <laughs> but those would be uh, my favorite ship girls, personally. Um, have you seen either of the anime based on it? And if you have, what are your thoughts on them? I prefer Slow Head. There have been a couple of trailers I've seen. Um, in fact, uh, somebody had uh, actually sent me a trailer recently. Uh, their most recent one from Azur Lane. I thought it was really good. Well animated. The 2D and the 3D stuck really well. And I really enjoyed the action. Um, I can't remember the name of the most recent trailer, but that's the one I watched. Because uh, it was sent to me, uh, and I checked it out. I really enjoyed it. Thought it was great. Um, but yeah, good question. Um, Brandy Miller asks, top 10 best death battles. Oh, whew, man. Uh, there are some pretty good death battles. Then there are some that are... Eh. But uh, for, the, for the ones that are really good, I did enjoy... Uh, Deathstroke versus Deadpool. <laughs> that one was a lot of fun. I also liked Bane versus Venom. That one was really good. Doctor Doom versus Darth Vader was pretty good. That was pretty fun. Um, then again, Doctor Doom is so powerful. <laughs> like, he really is. Uh, so is Darth Vader, though, but Doom. Oh, man. Uh, I also did enjoy uh, Deadpool versus, what was the My Little Pony one? That one was pretty funny, actually. Because that was just basically fourth wall breaking, because that's what they did. Uh, that was funny. That was just humorous. Todoroki versus, uh, Zuko was pretty good. Uh, I did like that one, actually. Um, then there was, uh, you know, Beardas versus Sailor Galaxia. That one wasn't too bad, either. I did kind of like the Goro versus Machan. I did watch that one. That one was uh, pretty good also. And As Death versus Grey. You know, you take two of some of my favorite anime. <laughs> and you had that one. That, that, was, that was pretty good. And that one actually made sense with As Death. Like, it really did. Uh, but yeah, those would probably be my favorites, I'd say.
did you watch Red vs. Blue Zero? Because I did only think good uh, about, or only good thing about uh, were the fight scenes. Um, no, I didn't because I didn't care. I quit caring about Red vs. Blue years ago, but then again, that was like from seasons 11 to 13 because the writing was so god awful. And you had like the original people basically starting to step off from it. And then you started getting talentless hack writers like Miles Luna working on it because he started at season 11. Huh. Makes sense why it went downhill. <laughs> but yeah, good questions. Uh, Duke Nuka Cola asks, Let's speak voice actors, Draco. Which version of Dio do you prefer? Uh, Takehito uh, Koyasu or Patrick Saints? Uh, they're both good. Uh, Takehito Koyasu, though, I, I love it. You know, just like, Zawado! <laughs> just the way he does it. It's so good. It reminds me of uh, Sayo from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. It was almost as if Sayo was like carbon copy of Dio, you know, before they started to, like, do the exact, um, you know, uh, manga adaptation, because, you know, they had, like, the old, um, OVAs of, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure back in 1995, but, like, you look at, uh, you know, like, the manga, which was fully adapted, uh, for the most part, I mean, there have been a couple of things that the manga, you know, has not had adapted, sadly, but it's just funny how well, uh, Takahito Koyasu was, both as Dio and Sayo. But Patrick Saints is really good. Like, I did like his Dio because he was so good. He was so convincing trying to be British in the first part. I mean, I was like, oh man. I was like, this is fantastic. Like, he was so good. So, I liked him as Dio. Like, but Takahito Koyasu probably takes the cake at the end of the day. Um, who are your favorite Japanese voice actors? What are my all-time favorites? And this is a pretty good one because most people will know who I'm talking about. Um, one of my favorites is uh, James in Pokemon. Um, you know, his voice actor, uh, Shinichiro Miki, he is so good. Like, I really like him. Um, and, you know, when I watch uh, Pokemon in Japanese, like, I love listening to him as James. He's so good. He was also Zamasu in Dragon Ball Super. Which he was really good at that, too. And it took me by shock. When I was like, wait a minute. I was like, that's James from Pokemon. <laughs> and I, I, was, uh, I was just, like, floored by that one. Uh, Takahito Koyasu is really good. Um, I like him as a voice actor. Like I said, Sayo in GX, like, for Yu-Gi-Oh! He was so good as the villain. Uh, he's good at that. He's good at villain roles. Uh, Dio, which I think he's the perfect Dio, personally. Like, he's so good. <laughs> he's amazing. Another VA that I think is really good is Kinjiro Suda. That guy. Now, for those of you who may not know who that is, that is Seto Kaiba in Japanese. Now, if you were to portray, like, an older Kaiba, he would be perfect for that. I think he's really good, though, regardless. He's done many other series as well, but a lot of people are going to know him as Kaiba. And, oh, that guy, excellent, excellent voice actor. Like, he blows it away. So good. Just, anytime I hear, Oh, no burst or stream! I just, ah, uh, it's like, oh, iconic Kaiba. <laughs> like, I, I just love it. He was also Bacchus in uh, Fairy Tale. That was another good one that he was. And he was Overhaul in Hero Academia. Like, I mean, the guy is so good. I love it any time that he does a role. Like, he's just so good. I mean, he really is. Like, any time I hear him, I'm like, I know who that is. I'm like, that's Seto Kai. <laughs> like, I just, I always catch on to it, like, the moment I hear him in anime. And while we're on Yu-Gi-Oh!, another one of my favorite uh, VAs uh, would definitely be uh, Yuya Miyashita. He's actually... Uh, the VA for Yusei. He's also a singer. I mean, the guy is good. He's talented. I like him a lot. Like, he was a really, really good Yusei. In fact, to me, in terms of all the VAs, he's the best Yusei. <laughs> but uh, another one, no. This one, this one gets me. With a total of nine different voice actresses. My favorite one is Tomo Sakurai, who plays this Cynthia, or Shirona, in Pokemon. I Everybody knew I was going to know this fact. <laughs> like, oh, uh, God. Just her voice. She's so good. She's also a singer. And when she brought Cynthia's voice to life, 
when I heard her playing as uh, Cynthia, I was like, God, this is so good. Just the scene that I really loved is uh, where, where Cynthia's like, Ada, Ada. I was just like, oh. <laughs> I, I just, oh, man, that scene it pulled up my heartstrings, man. I just, it, it was so good. I enjoyed every moment of it. <laughs> just, uh, just thinking like, oh, mama. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, next, next, uh, Next, next to VA, uh, Sayaka O'Hara is another one I really like. Uh, she voices Airs of Scarlet, and ironically, she also played as Diantha in Pokemon too. And in like my favorite anime ever, Code Geass, she was also Millie Ashford. So <laughs> it's pretty cool to see that Sayaka O'Hara had played in like some of my favorite series ever. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, uh, and uh, especially you know like Airs of Scarlet. Hmm. Favorite character in Fairy Tale. Um, who are your favorite English VAs? So I really like Laura Bailey. I mean, yeah, she played as Abby in the Soy of His Part Two, but to be fair, it's not her fault how the character was written. She seems to be a very nice person, and I, I've always liked the roles. But uh, my favorite that I think she's probably done. Uh, I really like Laura Bailey playing as Lucina, while well, she was Lucina. I, I love that. In Fire Emblem Awakening, uh, she was great. Um, I, I loved her playing as Lucita. Um, also, uh, another uh, person that I like is Vic Mignogna. You know, he's one of my all-time favorite VAs. If there's one thing, uh, I would really like to meet him. If I ever get the chance, it'd be great to just sit down and talk with him. I mean, that'd be cool. You know, he played as Edward Elric, Broly. Uh, you know, he was funny. Uh, the very first time I ever heard him voice act was when he was Broly, you know, the original uh, Dragon Ball Z Broly movie. That's actually how I, you know, heard his voice acting for the first time. It was really cool. Um, he's the only crow, by the way. There's no other crow. He's the only crow. You can't tell me there's another crow. No, there's only one crow in Ruby before Ruby went to shit. And even during the time it went to shit, he was still only crow. I appreciated him. And I still do to this very day. Because Vic Mignogna is a wonderful man. Johnny Young Bosch, you know, he was uh, Ichigo in Bleach. And then also, he was in Power Rangers. Which, he was also Lelouch in Code Geass, which, <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, I like that, too. He he's really great. I like Johnny Young Bosch. Uh, Michelle Ruff. Uh, Michelle Ruff, I remember the very first time I uh, heard her voice act. Uh, she was Ellie from Brave. That was crazy wild to think back on that. Like... Man, I miss that old, <laughs> those old days. Oh, Rave, if only we get an anime, like, adaptation to continue the series. Like, it had one, but, oh, that would be one that would be, like, a dream come true to see it continue and, like, go all the way through. I would, I would adore that. Oh, man, that'd be, that'd be, like, a dream for me. That, that would be, like, gold right there. She also played in Lupin the Third. She was Fujiko. That's another one. I mean, she's done a lot over the years. I mean, I really like Michelle Ruff. She was also Rukia. <laughs> that too, in Bleach. She she was Rukia in Bleach as well. She's done a lot. I, I really like her. Uh, and Elizabeth Maxwell is really good. She, you know, which a lot of people know her in Ruby is, you know, Winter. Uh, I do like her as well. I also like uh, Mary McGlynn who was Motoko Kusanagi and goes in the shell, which, superb job. I mean, superb. Uh, she's great. I mean, she was also Kuranai and Naruto. But yeah, she's really good at what she does. Uh, Todd Hapricorn, I like him also. He's great. You know, um, he's played as Ling. He's played as Natsu. He's had some good roles as well. Like, I like him too. You know, <laughs> there have been some uh, great, you know, VAs over the years. And, uh... One that is amazing is uh, Eric Stewart. You know, he was Kaiba. And he was also uh, Brock. You know, people will remember him. Not only that, but, uh, you know, like, I think he's actually really good for, like, Kaiba in, in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I, I really do. I, I think he's fantastic. And then uh, Dan Green is, uh, you know, the Pharaoh. Tim and Yugi, I mean, he was good. He's legendary as well. You know, they're great. I, I love them. Like, they're so good at what they've done. Like, they are fantastic. It will never be forgotten. They're so good. Um, but yeah, those would be my favorite uh, English VAs. If Pokemon Adventures were to ever be adapted as an anime, what would your perfect cast be, whether it's Japanese or English? 
Oh, God. That's crazy to think about. Oh, man. Huh. I don't know. It, it's That's insane for me to think about. You know what would be amazing? I just thought about this. Eric Stewart actually being Gary. <laughs> or Blue. Oh, God. That'd be great. Or let him be Silver. Oh, man. That'd be so good. Oh, I'd love that. That would be amazing. Oh, God. Too good. That'd be too good. Oh, he'd be excellent. Um, you know what? Have Laura Bailey be Cynthia. And I, I, you got me sold. I don't care. Whether the product's good or not, I'd, I'd be sold in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that would be good. Have Johnny Young Bosch be red. Jesus Christ, that would be fucking amazing. <laughs> I would love that. That'd be so good. Like, Johnny Young Bosch being red, or Vic Mignogna, one or the other. That'd be way too good. Oh, man, that would be excellent. I would actually love that. That would be just the most beautiful thing ever. But th that's really all I could think of. But th <laughs> those would be some good choices, in my opinion. But yeah, good questions, man. Thanos number one asks, how many shots would you need to get with these Ruby girls? Neo, I don't need any. I will literally just pick her up and take her to the bedroom. It, it will be done and done. I don't care. I will lick the sweat off of her body. <laughs> done and done. Uh, winter, same thing. I, I would just do the same exact thing. I, I don't care. Raven, Jesus. I, no, you know what? I would do very, very, very naughty things to Raven. I would make sure that she had love in her life and that she would never leave. I would literally be her drug. <laughs> like, I would make her addicted to the pleasure and the fun times that would be coming ahead. <laughs> like, I'd basically just be like, I'm going to slap a ring on that finger. We're just going to make this official. <laughs> I would serenade her. <laughs> I would sing her to sleep every night. I would give her the best life. Oh, God. It would happen. Uh, Callie, you know what? Callie, just as thirsty as she is, you're not going to get enough time to have a shot because she's going to jump you. I feel like that's what would happen. If she didn't have Gara in her life, she'd just go after any man and drag him to her home. That's what I feel like uh, Callie would be. I feel like she'd do that. Glinda, Jesus Christ. Glinda is a damn giant. She's six foot five, but I don't care. I, I would, I'd do it. I'd give her the best love of her life. <laughs> it's exactly what I'd do. I wouldn't have to have any shots. I'd just do it. I don't care. She could do whatever she wanted to be, and I'd be all for it. <laughs> uh, and then Team Ruby. Jesus Christ. Not enough shots in the world to make me even remotely want to go near them, <laughs> let alone do anything with them. <laughs> like, if you were to be like, what would you rather have, Team Ruby or liver failure? Give me liver failure. Give me the damn liver failure. <laughs> Rather than Team Ruby. Oh my freaking god, I, I would, I'm serious. No, you couldn't ever, you could never make me want uh, <laughs> to do Team Ruby. That would be torture. It's torture enough just seeing them in the newest volume. Jesus. <laughs> oh god. It's bad whenever you'd be like, I'd rather have the living failure. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, good questions, man, good questions. Uh, Crash Bash asks, Hey, Draco, what uh, rare or valuable video games do you possess for any console? Um, I'm beginning my rare collection. Uh, you know, I've never looked into it. You know, actually, I think about it. I do have, like, uh, Pokemon Coliseum and XD for the GameCube. I even have the uh, Jirachi pre-order disc. And that's actually more expensive than I thought. I, I looked it up, and it was, like, $164. And I was like, oh, shit. And then I realized, like, I had the uh, pre-order uh, Hard Gold Soul Silver, and like a copy of those just opened is like two hundred dollars, and I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like I was surprised. I even have um, like for the GameCube. Uh, when the GameCube came out, you could also get like a chair, and I have that chair still. And I also have a Super Mario Sunshine towel that came with the game for a limited time. I don't know if anybody uh, has that, but I still have that. It's mint condition as if it was brand new. It's amazing. 
And I keep that thing, like, in a box. You know, like, a protective box to where that thing doesn't get dirty or anything. Like, that is a prized possession to me. But I keep that thing very, very uh, clean and secure. But uh, th those would be some things I'd say. Like, I do try to go after, like, the Switch stuff that uh, they only make for, like, limited time. I do go after those games, too. But... Uh, but that's some stuff I could bring up that, that I do have. I have Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. I have all the Pokemon games that were mainline games. I have all of them still, the cartridges, everything. I have them all the way back from red, blue, uh, and yellow even. And I keep them very safe and secure because uh, I cherish them. I really do. But, uh, yeah, that would be some stuff that uh, I'd say that I have that's uh, valuable. Plus, do you write or do world building? I actually do both. Um, you know, it's, it's something that uh, I've uh, enjoyed doing and... You know, it's fun. It's just fun to, when you're writing and you're world building, it's just fun to just emerge yourself, like, you know, just concentrate on that. Like, you just focus away from what's going on in the world. And you just kind of go into, like, your own imaginary space, I guess you could say. And you just come up with this stuff. It's fun. I, I love doing it. I love writing. I love world building. I love doing both. Because it's just, it's fun. I mean, it, I mean, it really is. It's uh, amazing to do. But yeah, uh, good question, man. Uh, now we're going on to the Discord questions. Uh, first off, starting with Captain Boomerang. What other anime became bad due to uh, bad writing like Ruby, and is it redeemable? You know, here's a really bad anime. This was just bad from the start. Uh, uh, it's called Hametsu no Mars, or uh, Mars of Destruction. Horrible. Absolutely terrible. It's writing's awful. You know, like, the uh, animation, bad. Like, it's a horrible series. It's not redeemable, but here's the thing. It would be closer to being redeemable than Ruby. It, it would have a possibility if it was rebooted and done right. But Jesus Christ, it's terrible. I'm serious. You can check it out, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's a horrible series. <laughs> like, it's so bad. Oh, it'll be a good question, man. The Bleeding Shadow asks... What would you consider the worst anime-inspired Western cartoon, not counting Icardian Spice? <laughs> I would say Modern Ruby. You know, one time Ruby was, you know, fun. It was just stupid fun. Yeah, it had holes in its story, but, you know, it wasn't terrible. It was something you could enjoy to watch. You know, something you could have fun with. But uh, now, it's, it's fucking garbage. And it was inspired by anime. That's a sad thing to say, is that it went from being decent to just terrible. I mean... What more do I need to say? Uh, what T-rated game would you like to see become M-rated, either with more violence or more fan service? I'd probably say Metroid. I would love to see an M-rated Metroid game. That would be a load of fun. I, I would enjoy that, because, you know, I love Metroid. You know, and we've seen it be teen. But I would love for them to, like, press the envelope further. Go into a mature setting. And give us some Samus fan service. That, that would be really good i'd enjoy it then again you know not saying that metroid's not good before this i mean unless you're other we don't talk about other but but uh you know uh but i mean you know i'm just saying if you were to take that make it m rated man it could probably be really good if it's done well in which they generally do really good with metroid games like they are fun they are you know challenging but definitely very rewarding so i, I would say uh yeah, you know, do an M-rated Metroid. I, I think that'd be great. I don't think Nintendo ever will, but I think it'd be good. That's just me. Uh, what's the worst Nintendo console to you? Definitely the Wii U. I mean, I thought it was just... I don't know. I, I mean, I really just was not a fan of it. Um, because, like, I was a big fan of the GameCube. You know, like... I have all the Nintendo consoles, and GameCube, I think, was one of the best. N64 was really good. Uh, I really liked the Switch, but the Wii U, I felt, was just so bad. You know, obviously, Nintendo typically are pretty low in their technology. You know, they're not on the spectrum of, like, Xbox, PlayStation, certainly not uh, PC. But that's the one I would say is the Wii U was just bad. <laughs> I didn't like having a tablet for a controller, but that's just me. Uh, but yeah, good question, Ben. Stu Never Gives Up asks, Bandai Namco has fallen. Did you buy any of their games? And if so, will you buy from the future? I know I won't. Uh, I've bought their games multiple times. Uh, you know, I've been a fan of the Soul Calibur series. Um, you know, Tekken. Uh, 
Like, I mean, I've bought like multiple anime games, like Xenoverse things that sort. And here's what I'll say: uh, when I start seeing like really, really woke shit, <laughs> you know, like when I start seeing some woke stuff starting to be put in there, even if it's like a little smudge, then I'll probably be like, okay, no, I'm done. You know, because if I start seeing woke shit in their games, then I'm out. Which now them wanting to appeal to a global audience, yeah, I I'm highly worried, 100. percent But I mean, we'll see. I'll buy games and I'll warn people if they do start throwing woke stuff in there. I think that'd be like the best way for me to do it to inform people that hey, look, there's woke stuff in here. It's not good. This is a problem. But uh, but yeah, that's just me though. But I, you know, if they do, I will quit. But yeah, uh, good question, man. Uh, Captain Boomerang asks, what mythical creature would you want as a guardian? As for me, I'd choose Medusa. I would want a European dragon. That's what I'd want. I'd want that as my guardian. Because <laughs> I love dragons. But that's just me. Uh, Charmark asks, which I know you told me your name. I, I probably just butchered it, which I've done before, which I apologize. And if I did again, I'm sorry. But um, uh, Charmark asks, who is the best DC villain? I'd say Darkseid. Personal opinion, best villain to me, Darkseid. I mean, he came in, he was a beast from the beginning. He's seen as a god. You know, like, he's very feared. And his first fight with Superman, he beat the crap out of him. No kryptonite involved. Like, he beat him to a pulp. Darkseid, to me, is, is the most, like, fearsome and best villain, I'd say, in DC ever. Uh, what's your favorite fast food place? You know, I'm not entirely sure. That's a tough one. Um. Ah. Uh, huh. You know, I'd probably say Zaxby's actually. That's probably my favorite because I really do like them. They they do really good. So I'd probably say Zaxby's. Yeah, that's that's what I'd have to go with. Uh, have you heard of Waffle Pond? Waffle Pond? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, I have no idea what that is. So I, I no, I, I haven't. Uh, do you watch Mick? Jigger Nuggets? Mc McJigger Nuggets? Uh, no, I, I do not. I have no idea. I, I'm guessing that is a YouTuber? I, I, I don't know. I, I No, I haven't. Uh, who's the sexiest waifu? That's tough to say because there's so many good ones. <laughs> um, um, uh, I don't know. It's either going to be between Heirs of Scarlet to me or Mordred. Probably those two, but that's just me. Uh, Steve Marathon asks, do you uh, like sharp chins and tumor breasts? If so, why? Um, so to me, uh, here, here's the way that I see that. Um, I don't mind sharp chins because I've seen many different styles of art. Um, so it doesn't really bother me. Um, so I'm not bothered by it. Tumor breast just depends upon the size. Like if they're like, you know, so big that the body, like, the woman doesn't have, like, a shape. You know, like, it's just breast taking over the body. Like, she doesn't have curves or anything. Yeah, no, that's too big for me. Uh, I like women that have, like, C cup or D cup. That's just me. But, uh, you know, um, at least it's not Tumblr art. <laughs> you know, or Cal's art shit. At least it's none of that. I'll give him credit. At least it's not that garbage. But that's just me. Good question, man. Good question. Um... Uh, Mr. DJ Fly High asks, best Ruby mom and why? Now, I've gone through a whole thing with this. <laughs> I've had to think about it. And I have reached the conclusion that Raven is the best mom. Now, this is going to sound crazy. But I love this bandit. Her design is excellent, in my opinion. Like, I, I love the way Raven looks. The beautiful red eyes, the pale white skin, the black hair. Just, she looks fantastic. And then, of course... The black uh, and red outfit, like, oh, man, I, I love it. It looks great in terms of design, in my opinion, um, because I like the color scheme. Then again, I like red and black. I'm pretty biased to those colors, but that's just me because um, they're my favorite colors. But also, uh, you know, at least she doesn't have to worry about being around Yang anymore <laughs> or having anything to do with the plot. At least she doesn't have to worry about being around a bunch of morons. They're going to ruin her and make her worse. <laughs> like, but also, the fact that her character, yeah, her whole like plot was kind of dumb. It, let's be real. Her plot was stupid. But, to be fair, she's really not the stupidest character anymore. <laughs> 
she's really not that stupid in comparison to like Team Ruby where they're basically nothing but a bunch of terrorists. Besides Raven, I love the just her design. Look, let me tell you right now, if that woman was there, I would serenade her. I would take her by her hand. Look in her gorgeous, blood red, beautiful eyes. And I would tell her, you were the most beautiful woman that has walked the face of this earth. I will make sure that you were loved and appreciated. I would take you and I would lick the sweat straight off of your body. I don't care where you tell me and I will do it. I will ensure that you have the best night of your life with love making and I will make sure that I am your cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be that guy that'll set up rose petals <laughs> in the room put like you know a, a big beautiful dining table together have a candlelit dinner ready for her. and i'd be like sweetheart this is just the beginning of paradise because next we're going to commit history's biggest crime of all time we're going to violate each other's rights until we're completely drained dry and pass out in our own love juices Oh my, how lewd. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely say, Raven is the best mom. She is 100% without a doubt, to me, the best mom. But that's just my opinion. But yeah, good question, man. Johnny Q asks, who is the best gun to protagonist from any timeline? Char, man. <laughs> Char did nothing wrong. <laughs> Char is the best character. He's the best antagonist. Change my mind. He, he is the best character. And I love the line where he's like, I've never betrayed anyone in my entire life. <laughs> it's so good. Shar is fantastic. Oh, I love his character. He's great. He's the best villain, in my opinion. Best character in uh, Gundam to me. But yeah, good question, man. Uh, best rat wife who asks, what commercials do you remember seeing as a kid? I have some weird memories um, it, the, the <laughs> of commercials. Like... There was one, it was a Tombstone Pizza commercial. Now, some of you uh, may know what I'm talking about here, where this guy, he's like set up to be like, you know, killed, you know, execution style. You know, have like rifles at him. And they're, you know, the guy's like, you know, you know asking him what he wants, you know, and he's like uh, turning down like a cigarette and all this stuff. And then in the end, he's like, it's like, what do you want in your tombstone? Pepperoni and cheese. <laughs> he just gave him like a pepperoni and cheese pizza. Or the uh, Burger King, uh, what was it? Bacon, uh, double flame boiled Whopper. Like, they don't even have that anymore. They, I mean, that, that was insane. It looked great. Like, I mean, of course, it was advertisement food. It wasn't going to be as good as when you were going to actually get, but still, it looked great. I mean, it really did. McDonald's used to have uh, advertisers for kids' toys, even. Like, matchboxes and Barbies in, in kids' meals. <laughs> like, I remember that. Hell, Pepsi even had an advertisement for Woodstock. <laughs> I remember that too. It's crazy stuff. It's so crazy. I mean, you think like that doesn't happen today. It's so different. It's so different. But yeah, good question, man. Uh, Captain Boomerang asks, favorite quote from an anime hero slash villain and a quote from our dumb reality we live in. This is an excellent quote and I would love to see how this is actually done. But this is a quote from like my favorite JoJo villain. You, which napkin would you take? The one on your left or the one on your right? The one on your left side or the one on your right side? Usually, you would take the one on your left side. That is correct, too, but in a larger sense on society, that is wrong. Perhaps I could even substitute society with the universe. The correct answer is that it is determined by the one who takes his or her own napkin first, yes? If the first one takes the napkin to the right, then there's no choice but for the others to take the right napkin. The same goes to the left. Everyone who will take the napkin to the left. Because they have no other option. This is society. Who are the ones that determine the price of land first? There must have been someone who determined the value of money first. The size of the rails on a train track. The magnitude of electricity. Laws and regulations. Who was the first to determine these things? Did we all do it? Because this is a republic? Or is it an arbitrary? No! This one who took the napkin first determined all of these things. The rules of this world are determined by the same principle of right or left. In a society 
like this table, a state of equilibrium. Once one makes the first move, everyone must follow in every era. This world has been operating by this napkin principle, and the one who takes the napkin first must be someone who is respected by all. It's not that anyone can fulfill this role. Those that are despotic or unworthy will be scorned, and those are the losers in the case of this table. The eldest, or the master of the party, will take the napkin first, because everyone respects those individuals. Sorry, I was rambling. <laughs> I love Funny Valentine. He's such a good character. And that is so good. Araki's a damn genius. <laughs> if anybody tells you otherwise, they don't know what good writing is. <laughs> like, Araki's good. He's a damn genius. And yeah, you know, he's had his high points and low points in his writing. But, God, he was so good with Steel Ball Run. So good with that. Oh, it was amazing. Oh, it's just, that's like my favorite quote. Like, just, I love that whole thing with Funny Valentine there. It's so good. I'm not going to spoil it, but God, it's so good. And I got a couple of good ones for you. Like, where some people, you know, like uh, SJWs go on and say, white people are inherently racist. No, they're not. And nobody's born inherently racist. That's just stupid to think that way. You know, they uh, try to go on and say, oh, don't body shame. And then what are they doing? They, they body shame, uh, you know, women, for example, because they're attractive. But yet they try to say they stand for women, and then they just, you know, completely go against it. You know, they, they try to basically be like, oh, well, she can't show off her body because she's attractive. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, stupid stuff like that. I could pick so many things. <laughs> this is just examples. But I could pick a ton <laughs> where these people are just so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, good question, man. Good question. Double Trouble asks, what do you think of Joker from Better Bachelor? Now, I've never seen Better Bachelor, so I don't know. I couldn't give you an opinion on that. But, I mean, I could check it out and uh, see what I think. But, yeah, good question. Uh, Thomas Halo asks, have you ever read the Disaster Artist novel and watched uh, the Disaster Artist film? Also, uh, what inspired you to get into writing? So... <laughs> Funny, funny thing. I've actually watched The Room. Um, and, you know, it's actually interesting. Tommy was, <laughs> like, the movie's so awful <laughs> that it's great. It's so terrible that it's good. Once a year, I have a thing to where I literally watch it once a year. Every year. Because that movie is so damn funny. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I watch it once every. That, that's a tradition of mine. It's whenever I feel like it, but I just sit down and I just watch it because it's so bad, but it's so funny. I mean, it's glorious. Um, but yes, I have seen the Disaster Artist film, and man, it's it's interesting. It's it's a ride, <laughs> just like the room. It's it's a ride. Also, what inspired you to get into writing? Um, I just always liked uh, the idea of writing. When I was uh, 15 years old, I decided that. Uh, I really wanted to get into my art, and that went the same with writing, and I just started making dojins, you know, and uh, it, it's really what inspired me. Uh, Rave Master was uh, the biggest inspiration, I'd say, because I, I loved it so much, and it got me into it. But yeah, good question, man. Phoenix Grim 22 asks, are you a fan of any of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series? Oh, big time, uh, 100%. Uh, I've just been doing, like, a watch-through of, like, uh, older stuff, and, uh, obviously, like, my favorite is 5Ds. It's always been my favorite. Out of all the Yu-Gi-Oh! shows, the Dark Signer arc, I'd say, is the best arc. <laughs> like, it is just the best. Also, Yusei's best protagonist, and Aki is best girl. 100%. But, let's be real. Best character is Seto Kaiba. <laughs> but I will say, worst series of all Yu-Gi-Oh! is arc 5. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Yu-Gi-Oh! sucks. I hate Yu-Gi-Oh! so much. I really do. Fuck you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, top five One Piece characters. So, in my top five, it's kind of shifted since I talked about it last time. Because uh, Sanji's in there. Sanji's great. Uh, I really like Sanji. Uh, he's an excellent character. Uh, Yamato, she's gotten up there. Like, I've actually really started to like her a lot. She's an excellent character. Um, Zoro. <laughs> Zoro's just getting better and better, I think, as time goes on. He, I mean, he's great from the beginning, but he just gets better 
Shanks, he's the best guy. Like, hands down, Shanks is the best guy, in my opinion. You don't fuck with that man. And then uh, Nico Robin, I think, is the best girl, which she's actually my favorite character in all of One Piece, though. Like, her arc is so good in Any's Lobby. Like, oh, God, that's, that arc to me stands out as still, like, the best arc, in my opinion. Um, top five fairy tale characters. All right, so Gadgeel is definitely up there. I love Gadgeel. He's like the Vegeta of fairy tale, if I had to say. Uh, Juvia is excellent. I love her gag, and they actually do it well. Like, Hiromashima did the gag with Juvia loving Grey so well. Like, it's actually funny. Uh, Brandish. Brandish is excellent. I love Brandish. She is, like, high-tier waifu. Uh, then Natsu. Natsu, like, like I said, I, he's an awesome character. And over time... You know, he was tied for number one with Erza, but Erza, I think, is uh, overall taking my number one spot. I, Erza's like the dream girl for me. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Um, yeah, good questions, Ben. Captain Boomerang asks, What anime would be amazing if it were to be made into live action if done right? I don't really know. I mean, Alita was great, and it followed the source material. I guess, realistically, you could do Pokemon. But, I mean, Netflix is already going to do that. And, we God, we know where that's going. It's going to be a disaster. But, if it was somebody who respected the material, maybe Pokemon could work. Maybe. And that that's still a stretch. But, maybe. It, it, even then, I don't know. It, it just, live action animated me, just, I don't know. I don't like the idea of it, but that's just me. But, yeah, good question, man. Best friend and wife who asks, which one of these lovely ladies you want as your personal maid? Oh, okay, so uh, out of all six of them that you have here, if I had to say, there's two of them in particular that I would want. Because this is the first three you're seeing here. Here's the second three. So, um, if I had to say, give me Vebe and give me Fruit. Those would be the two I would want as my maids. I, I would definitely be all for them being the maids. But that's just me because I love them both. They're great. Like, <laughs> both Bebe and uh, Fruit, excellent. I, I really enjoy them. They're, they're really great. Uh, but yeah, good question, man. Um, James95 asks, have you heard of a show called Ed, Ed, Eddie? Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a, a great cartoon back in the 90s through the 2000s. Excellent. And the movie, which wrapped up the whole show, you know, like the final movie, it was a wonderful ending in my opinion like Ed and Eddie if you haven't watched it you need to watch it you know like that is a great cartoon that was when Cartoon Network had its golden age going on was when uh you had Ed and Eddie Courage Cowardly Dog Johnny Bravo the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy uh Powerpuff Girls like the old OG Powerpuff Girls not not the newer reboots and all that crap I mean the original you had good stuff back in the day you really did too bad we don't have it anymore but yeah good question man Mr. DJ Fly High asks, favorite Bond girl? My favorite Bond girl of all time is Christmas Jones. She is my all-time favorite Bond girl. And, yeah, so that's who my favorite one is. And there's a variety, but she's the one that stands out the most to me. Uh, I thought she was the best one. But, yeah, good question, man. Best rat wife who asked, your top five favorite chocolate bar brands. I don't specifically have a favorite chocolate bar brand. Rather, I have a specific favorite chocolate bar. <laughs> um, so I'll kind of just tell you about that. and I'll give you a little story, I guess. Uh, so my favorite um, you know, chocolate bar is Fifth Avenue. If you haven't tried it, you definitely should. Uh, from the time I was a kid, um, I loved it. And that was because my grandfather, uh, he's the one who got me into them, actually. Um, and we would sit together, he would have me, like, you know, sitting next to him, and he would share the candy bar with me, and then, you know, like, he'd break off one piece of the candy bar, he'd eat it, I'd eat it, you know, got to the last bite, then him and I would, like, play wrestle for the last bite, and, uh, he usually let me win it. You know, he's, uh, no longer with us now. Honestly, I personally like the original, uh, Friday 13th, not the remake, the original one. Um, because, like, it was really good for its time, I think. And, you know, I still like it today. <laughs> and, you know, like, the remake was so bad because it told you how Jason got around the camps. And it sucked. 
because it was like, oh, he's got these underground tunnels. It was like, no, don't, don't, don't tell us how he, that's, that was the whole point of the surprise of how he was always there. And he ended up murdering people. Oh, it, it was, it ruined it. But the original is, is my favorite of all time. Uh, be a yeah, good question, man. Anime AK116 has some memes here. Um, this one saying, I can't believe he didn't cry at pity second death. Uh, do critics even have feelings? Uh, oh yeah, they're trying to say that we don't. Um, because, you know, that's what the SJWs do. Uh, and then it shows, like, this anime scene. And then down below, it shows, and Anne's mother has to leave her precious daughter behind. And it's like, oh. <laughs> like something that's more emotional than uh, Penny's actual death. Pretty terrible. Uh, because uh, Penny's death was awful. It, it was written terribly. Uh, my birthday song name. The last digit of your birthday and then birth month. Um, so, the red Hussars. Okay. <laughs> the red Hussars would be mine, I guess. All right, sure. Uh, Rommel, wait. So you only have 40 men. How did you manage to hold off my 3,000 elite shock troops? 40 insane Belgians. Well, you got me by all accounts. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, good memes, man. Uh, Falskrim Jaeger asks, for the October Q&A, who do you think is the scariest VTuber? I mean, I, I don't... I mean, I don't really think there's one that's scary. I mean, uh, I mean, unless you want to talk about like who does like horror stuff, but I can't really think of any. I I don't know. I I don't know really how to answer that one. I because I, I don't really think any of them are really scary. That's just me. Um, favorite unintentionally funny horror movie. Oh, uh, what was it? Uh, was it Jason in the Future? Was that you know Jason X? Like my God, that movie. I know it's supposed to be like. Uh, horror but it's funny favorite movie monster uh godzilla 100 percent. godzilla takes the cake because uh god uh, there's so many godzilla movies that i own that i love to watch godzilla is my favorite movie monster of all time you're <laughs> king of monsters uh least favorite movie monster okay so this one's an interesting one uh, the mummy the mummy's just not particularly been scary to me like frankenstein's monster yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty scary. If you know the whole story of Dr. Frankenstein and his monster, yeah, you know, if you've read the book, it makes sense. The mummy, uh, it just doesn't, uh, you know, Dracula's cool too, but I mean, like, the mummy, no, nah, I mean, mummy doesn't scare me, but that's just me. Uh, but good questions, man. Best rat wife who asked, if you took all your wife who stood them against the wall from shortest to tallest, who would they be? Had uh, trouble figure out uh, how to word it halfway. <laughs> well, um, I'd probably say Mount Lady be the tallest when she's using her quirk. Probably. Maybe. Um, so I would say that she's probably the tallest that I could think of. Now, I did have a few that were like the same height. Like, uh, what was it? Lucina, Samus. Uh, they were like 6'3". So there was a couple of them that were like 6'3". But then again, you could count Brandish. Because Brandish might actually be the tallest one, considering that she can alter the size of anything she wants, however she wants, including herself, because she can make herself huge too. So Brandish could really be the biggest wife, like the tallest one. So, yeah, maybe it's Brandish <laughs> because of her OP abilities. Uh, but yeah, good question, man. Mr. DJ Fly asks, if you wanted a metal cover of any old famous manga or comic book cover, what would it be? I would want a metal cover of uh, of Rave. That would be amazing. Or a fairy tale. Those would be two I would be like, I want a metal cover of this. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be awesome. I that's those those would be the ones I'd say that I would want to have a metal cover of. Yeah, good question, man. Uh, Quanto Riser asked questions for the October Q&A 2021. One, the picture above was the GN0000, GNT0000, Gundam 00 Quan T, which character from Ruby deserves to pilot the suit? Um, not Team Ruby. 
<laughs> uh, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, um, maybe Crow. Maybe Crow would work. Um, two, the second pig above was Common Rider, um, uh, Ixa in burst mode, wielding Ixa caliber. What if Mori Calliope did hinge it to, it's, I, I guess it's Ina, because, uh, I don't think it's supposed to be, Ina. I don't know. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure, um, be something, I guess. Uh, should I game in those clown libtards in Twitter, uh, for they hating the design of Bayonetta 3? As I always say, just leave them alone. You know, don't bother them, don't message them, leave them alone, all right? They're, you know, they're stupid, they make their own mistakes, they get called out for it, just leave them alone. <laughs> it's the best way to take care of it. Um... Easy, 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 low, uh, again, I'm gonna shit, alright, just kidding, final question for the world, what if Tony did rebuild the RXO Banshee Norn in his own version in what if? Oh, so you're talking about the, the Marvel what if, if Tony Stark had rebuilt it, I mean, the guy's a genius, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, if he were to, uh, take the RxO Banshee Norn, he'd probably make it very sophisticated, more so than it already is. Um, probably a way to take on any of its weaknesses, too. So, really, he would make it better than it is. So, yeah, if Tony Stark got his hands on a Gundam, uh, you better expect that Gundam to definitely be improved. <laughs> I, at least, I would think it would be. Now, this one's a uh, common writer. Um... I don't really know Kamen Rider because uh, I haven't watched Kamen Rider yet. I I've still been needing to get around to watching it. I have it, so I can't say anything about Kamen Rider, really. Uh, I mean, it looks good. I the things I've seen, it's really cool, but yeah. Uh, but good questions, man. Sleepy Otaku asks, who is your favorite lolly? Now, this is an interesting question. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not into lollies in, you know, a sexual way, but... You know, I can still see them as, like, cool characters and stuff. And I would say it goes to Wendy. Wendy from Fairy Tale, Because, like, Wendy herself, she's a cute character. You know, she had good development. Uh, the Tartarus arc did a lot for her. Dragon Force and everything. Like, I think she's a fun character. I, I really like Wendy. And she's good. Like, she really is. Good supportive magic as well. As offensive magic. I mean, she's great. I, I like Wendy's character. But, yeah, good question. Uh, James95 asks... What do you think of the My Little Pony fan base, and do you think they uh, are a bit fucked up? Um, now, I haven't really interacted with them, so I can't really say I've had, like, a problem with them. Like, at least not a personal experience. Um, so I don't really have an opinion on them, but that's just me. But yeah, good question. Uh, Quanta Riser asks, when Mazda meets uh, Agito Burning Form, and then it shows, uh, want to see my birdie form? Sure, well, let's, uh, me try. And then it shows how he can create a birdie form and the, the vehicle just explodes. <laughs> I, I, I get it. Uh, good meme, good meme. Uh, Metalord395 asks, how was your Halloween? It's same as every year, really. Uh, where I live, uh, kids don't come over to this location. Uh, so we don't get any trick-or-treat. Like, I, I don't. Like, nobody throughout the neighborhood where I live gets trick-or-treats. So, yeah, I, I don't get any. <laughs> so, it's just kind of meh. Um, what are your thoughts on how heavy are dumbbells you lift? Um, never seen it, so uh, would not know. Uh, B-Stars, I haven't watched B-Stars, but I've heard good things about it. Uh, Erased, Erased is pretty good. Um, it's not bad. Uh, definitely recommend it. Squid Game, haven't watched it, heard a lot of good things about it. I know there's a lot of people who really like Squid Game. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't have an opinion on it because I have not seen it. So. so I couldn't really say anything about it. Um, favorite funny moment from JoJo <laughs> or JoJo. Uh, one of my favorite moments is in part five when uh, Misa's being healed by Giorno. And then you have Naranja coming by and it looks like <laughs> Giorno's <laughs> like jerking off. Mista. <laughs> it's so good. And he's just like thinking, oh God. <laughs> That's <was> really good. <laughs> I love that moment. Uh, favorite fourth wall breaking moment from anime. There's so many that I could choose from. I think probably one of my favorite ones was uh, from Neptunia. The Neptunia series 
<laughs> there is a, a part where uh, they're talking about the Seven Sages, and Noir's trying to explain to Neptune and Plutia uh, about uh, the plot, basically. And so, Neptune gets bored. And she's just like, well, can't we just skip to this part, like, fast-forward it, like the fast-forward function of the game? And I love how Plutia is like, nah, I think we should just skip it. You know, press the square button. And then Noir gets pissed off, and she's like, You will listen to my plot-advancing lecture, got it? <laughs> like, I just... <laughs> that was actually probably one of the best, uh, you know, like, fourth-wall breaks that I've seen. I just, I love it. It's great. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on Super Smash Bros. Brawl and Ultimate? Uh, so, I'll say this. Brawl, it had a fun story mode, but... I don't like how it feels more like a party game as to where Melee, you know, the game prior to it, uh, it was better. Uh, it was more competitive and a lot more fun, in my opinion. Uh, because I feel like Brawl really dubbed it down and became more of a, a like I said, a party game. <laughs> so, uh, I was more of a fan of Melee in the terms of the playability outside of a story, because Melee didn't have a story. But, I mean, you had like adventure mode, but it wasn't really a story. Um, uh, now when it comes to Ultimate, I really enjoy Ultimate. Its story is fun. I mean, it, well, it's kind of a story. Um, and it's fun. I do like it a lot. Uh, and the game feels closer in a sense to what Melee was. To where it feels more competitive. Rather than it does like a party game like Brawl did. So realistically, uh, I'm more of a fan of Ultimate than I am Brawl. But that's just me. Now, my favorite is Melee. But, Ultimate... I think it has a lot of good things to it. I, I really do. Uh, Brawl, it's okay. It's it's not bad, but it, it definitely uh, could have had some improvements in terms of like um, how competitive play was, really. Um, which do you prefer, Japanese or English-speaking Marth? Honestly, I like the Japanese Marth. Nothing against Yuri Lowenthal, but that's the Marth I'm used to. <laughs> so I'm used to him, you know, in Japanese. But that's just me. It comes down really to preference. Um, what are your thoughts on short stack women? I mean, they're people. Um, you know, uh, not really my preference, but, uh, you know, hey, if they're happy with their life, that's as important. Uh, you know, I mean, that's just me. Uh, who wins these death battles? Uh, Hier Hierophant Green versus Silver Chariot. Um, that one may come down to potentially Hierophant Green. The reason why I say that is because it's ranged as to where Silver Cherry isn't. And there's a lot that you could do in terms of ranged as opposed to where Silver Cherry wasn't ranged. So probably Hierophant Green. Uh, Muzin, Mutsuji versus Dio Brando. Dio would be Muzin. Like, I mean, Muzin's good. Don't get me wrong. He's strong, but Dio has better powers. I'd have to give it to Dio. What are your thoughts on Genshin Impact? Do you recommend it? I asked because I was going to check it out, but I've heard less than favorable things about it. Um, I mean, like, I haven't really had the time to get into it. Uh, so I can't tell you from my perspective because I don't really have an opinion on it. Um, now, if you want to give it a try, that's up to you. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, don't give it a try. You know, do you. You know, if you want to give it a shot and, you know, play it and see how you feel about it go for it you know if you don't want to try it you don't have to you know that's the way i see it like you know just give it a shot on your own and that should help you form your own opinion on it so that you know you know whether this is a game for you or not and then you know uh if you're not interested then just be done with it uh, but if you like it continue to play it i mean that's i mean that's the only way you know how you're gonna like it or not is if you give it a shot uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how much of a weeb are you? Is if I had to say on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably put myself at like an 8 or a 9. Um, if I had to say. I'm probably that much of a weeb, honestly. So, yeah, probably an 8 or a 9, if I had to say. Um, is there such a thing as being too much of a weeb? I say just enjoy your hobbies. You know, like, have fun with them. Enjoy them. You know, if they... Or something that you want to collect, that you want to have fun with, do it, by all means. You know what I mean? Like, have fun with it. That's the important thing about stuff like this. Like, anime and manga. You love anime and manga. You know, 
enjoy it. Have have a good time with it. You know, there's nothing wrong with loving it. You know, nothing wrong with loving Japan. Nothing wrong with loving Japanese culture. Whatever, you know, you're into. Whether it be anime or manga. Whether it be comics. Whether it be whatever it is you're into. You know, nothing wrong with loving it. Nothing wrong with looking as much into it as possible. You know, just have fun with it. That's the important thing. So, I wouldn't say so. Um, but that's just me. But then, you know, this is also coming from somebody who's a, a big uh, anime and manga fan too. So, you know, like, have fun with it. That, that's the important thing. Uh, final question. What are your thoughts on gamer girls and would you like to date one? Oh, I've dated a few in my time. <laughs> I have. Um, so, um, my thoughts, I mean, people are different. So you're going to meet different gamer girls. You're going to meet some that are really, really cool. Then you're going to meet some bitches out there. <laughs> like, that goes with everybody, though. You're going to meet uh, good guys, good girls, bad guys, bad girls. It, it just happens, you know. Um, but, I mean, if I turn out to date another one in due time, okay, fine. As long as they're a great person, then, you know, I have no problem with it. You know, if they turn out to game, cool. You know, nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, good questions, man. So a month ago, there was a question asked to me by Best Rat Waifu. Asking if um, I could have a tier list. Because I had a tier list uh, of Pokemon waifus. And, you know, he asked me if I could have one for VTuber waifus. And I said I would for this month's Q&A. So now we're finally to it. Now, let's talk about this. We're going to get into the VTuber tier list. Now, this is just Hololive exclusive. So keep that in mind. Um, if I find other, you know, uh, tier lists, then uh, I will definitely uh, do them too. But uh, this is really the only one I could find with, like, the biggest list of them. Uh, so it was basically just Hollow Life. But you know what? I love Hollow Life, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so the listings are slap a ring on the finger. That is number one status. That means they are the best. This is the ones you should marry. <laughs> uh, she got that spice of fire. Very close to wife status. I mean, which would be good for wife status. Hot damn. It means they got it going, huh? You, definitely uh, a, a, a keep. <laughs> definitely a keeper to go for. Uh, she's got the stuff that really... Get you going, you know what I mean? Uh, take over a date or two that could be really good. And, uh, you know, definitely uh, date worthy. Uh, friends with benefits. Well, you know, friends with benefits. And then friends, it doesn't go any further than that. All right, now let's get started. So, A-Chan. She would definitely be take out for a date or two. Uh, really kind individual. And uh, works with a lot. So, you know, she definitely knows how to you know take a load. If you know what I mean. <laughs> but seriously, though, uh, for real. Achan, definitely take over a date or two. The next one, Sora, she would be, she's got that spice of the fire because she is an OG. And I gotta say, she does excellent work. Whether it be gaming, whether it be singing, she has got a lovely voice. Uh, I have to say, Sora, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful idol. The next one would be Roboco. Oh, yeah. Roboco, I would say friends with benefits, but she's great nonetheless. Uh, you know, I do enjoy Roboco, and she can be pretty funny. I, I, I think she's great. Um, now, another one. Now, this is a pretty big one. Sakura Miko, the Shrine Maiden. What do I think of Sakura Miko? Sakura Miko would definitely be slap a ring on that finger. She is absolutely hilarious. I love watching her gaming. Uh, she's very fun. Uh, you know, <laughs> she uh, does some pretty fun videos, and I love it when she rages. It's more like a play rage. But uh, I do love it. And there's been memes <laughs> of, like, her GTA plays and stuff like that. I mean, it's funny stuff. <laughs> like, she's great. Now, the next one is Aski. Uh, so, I don't know much about her. I recently discovered Aski, uh, believe it or not. Uh, which is kind of crazy, uh, considering that I've seen, like, basically almost every single Hololive member. I hadn't actually seen Aski till recently, so I've been looking more into her. So right now, just kind of friends, because I, I don't know enough about her. But she does have a good idol design. Now, the next one is a big one. Suisei, man, I love her. Her voice, I mean, you know, she was an independent VTuber before she became Hololive. And she's great. Uh, listening to her sing, she has, like, an angelic voice. I mean, a lot of these, you know, uh, VTubers do, but, like... Oh, she's got the spice of the fire. She could serenade me. Now, the next one is Fubuki. Fubuki, hot damn. <laughs> 100%. Fubuki is good um, at imitating voices. It's crazy how uh, I've seen her, like, uh, imitate, like, Marine, for example, and, like, a few other VTubers. She's good at it. Like, it's crazy. I mean, and, and she's just so sweet. She's got such a kind personality about her. I, I love her. Now, the next one would be Matsuri. 
which I give her friends and benefits. I mean, she's adorable though. <laughs> she really is. And, uh, but I mean, I feel like she'd be someone you would be good friends with, but then, uh, yeah, a little fun on the side. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, she's great. Now the next one would be Mel. Now I would have to say that I would take her out for a date or two. I, I think that she'd be somebody like you could warm up to pretty well. I mean, and, uh, she'd be fun. <laughs> she'd be, uh, fun to take out on a date. Uh, she really would be. Now the next one's a big one. Akai Hato or Hachima. Hachima, Hachima. Um, she, she's a big one. Uh, definitely gonna slap a ring on that finger. I, I know everybody's like, oh, the danger. <laughs> but, uh, she's cultured. She's cultured. She's fun. I swear. Like, I, I am like, man, I'm like, she is hilarious. I love her bitch tower video that she made. <laughs> that was hilarious. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely, uh, somebody you'd slap a ring on that finger. Now, the next one, Aki Rosenthal. Now, um, with Aki, I've seen a little bit of her. <laughs> Not a whole lot. But from what I've seen, I definitely would say for right now, friends with benefits. Now, that could change the more I get to see her. But I really do enjoy her so far. She's pretty good. Um, but yeah, next one would definitely be Aqua. And you know what? Aqua is adorable. Like, she's got that spice of fire. I love her cute personality. Now, I do know that there were some people that went after her earlier in the year. Uh, and... I remember she got really nervous, and she left, took a break for a little while, and uh, she actually lost her voice. I mean, it was uh, sad for her, because she's a great singer. And, I mean, she, like I said, she's like one of the kindest VTubers out there. I mean, I, I love her. Aqua's great. Uh, next one would be Choco. Choco, <laughs> she, oh, man, you want to talk about a lewd one? Uh, Choco knows how to be lewd. She's enjoyable also. So, alongside Aqua, I would have to put uh, Choco in there, uh, because Choco... <laughs> <laughs> She'll get you good to stream. Expect all the lewdness. Now, uh, the next one would be Nakiri Yame. And uh, what I have to say about uh, her is she's really good. Uh, she, she's under that hot damn category. Uh, for one, she's got a great personality. But two, just that design. I love the design they made for her. It's great. And she's good at singing. I mean, like I like people that can sing. She, she's good at it. Now, Shion. I would take her out for a date or two. Shion is... Really great. I love the uh, skits between her, Aqua, and Marie. <laughs> those, those get me every time. Those are always fun that they do. Like, whenever they do them. And they're hilarious. So, yeah, I'd take her out for a date or two. Uh, now, Subaru. Subaru is under hot damn. You know, the good tomboy waifu. Uh, she's <laughs> just so good. I remember when she got uh, her extra outfit. And, like, she had, like, the long hair. And people were, like, just uh, giving her compliments. And she couldn't handle it. So she got so shy, she just, like, shut down her stream <laughs> because she couldn't handle it. Uh, the the adorableness overload was there. It was really great. Next one is Mio. Now, Mio is under hot damn also. From her good live uh, singing that she does sometimes, those streams are nice, to her sweet personality. Also to the good design that she has. You know, I really do like Mio. Um, Mio is definitely hot damn because she, that body, too. <laughs> but anyways, so... Okuyu is next, and I would have to say that she would, uh, you know, be someone you'd take out on a date or two. She, she'd be fun. Uh, you know, for one, she also likes to game, so if you wanted to, like, go at home, and, you know, you wanted to just, like, play video games, she'd be pretty good at it. She, you know, which she is. She, she's pretty fun to watch playing games, so I'd have to give her that. Now, Corone. Corone. This, this troll. <laughs> she, she's so trolly, but, yeah, I love it. I, I love Corona. She's the best doggo. She she is best doggo waifu. Uh, I'd slap a ring on that finger. And then, you know, she'd be extremely energetic and troll about it. But you know what? It'd be fun. Then again, she also did that whole thing where she got, like, arrested recently. You know, that whole joke and stuff. It, it's so funny. The reactions, great. Uh, next one would be Flair. Flair would take out on a date or two. She would be someone I think that you'd have fun with out in public. Um, Flair's cool. Uh, you know, I really do like her. Uh, her aesthetic, like her design, uh, is definitely a really good one, being an elf. Uh, I, I like it. She's cool. Now, the next one's a big one, Hosho Marie. Ladies and gentlemen, I love this pirate. I, I, <laughs> I, I love this sexy, lewd pirate. She is one that is so comical, and I love it. She's also a masochist, but she, you know, she's not afraid to, like, joke around about herself, even. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's so entertaining. And this very sexy, lewd, naughty pirate. Well, she makes me want to be naughty for sure. Pervert. But in all seriousness, um, Marine, she's a really kind person. She remembers the people that she chats with, you know, that super chats her and everything. And, you know, uh, I'll, I'll say this. During a hard time in my life, um, you know, Marine actually did motivate me to get back up and to keep fighting, to keep pushing, to uh, work hard, to stand back up and be the best version of myself I could be. Uh, because she motivated me that well. Um, you know, she actually uh, helped me uh, in a hard time when I was watching her, her just entertaining people. You know, it hit me pretty well. And uh, I have to thank Maureen for that. Because she works hard herself and she's excellent. I would say she's number one waifu. But that's just me. Now, uh, Noelle, uh, I'd have to say uh, Noelle, she's definitely got that spice in that fire. I, I really like Mo Noelle. Uh, Noelle's an excellent VTuber. Uh, and, you know, I really like uh, her streams that she's done, like, with, uh, you know, like, Legend of Zelda and, Jira and Dragon Quest. Uh, she's done really good with them. Uh, you know, <laughs> makes them fun. Her reactions, I mean... She's great. Uh, I do like Noelle. Now, the next one, Picora. Picora's crazy, but you know what? I'd take her out. I'd take her out for a date or two. She, you know, uh, she'd probably uh, <laughs> be bouncing off the walls. <laughs> but uh, she'd be a fun one. She really would be. Um, so I got to give her that. She would be fun. Now, Rushia. Rushia, I would say, uh, hot damn to that. Because Rushia, she's great. She could be in Metal Band if she wanted to be. She's got the voice for it. Uh, she she could scream real well, too. Like, if she wanted to do that, oh, yeah, she'd be good. Probably screamo, even. <laughs> but, uh, Rushia, she's, uh, she's a character. She's definitely a comical one. Now, the next one is Sivia. She was from the Chinese branch, and I didn't really get to see her. Uh, she's obviously graduated now, so I don't have an opinion. I mean, I could go back over the stuff that she did, though, but, uh, I haven't had the time yet, but um, I know she graduated. And then there was Yogiri, uh, same thing. She was also part of the Chinese uh, one that was disbanded. Um, and so I don't really have an opinion there either. <laughs> so I uh, really can't say anything about her. Now, Spade Echo, same thing. <laughs> you know, this is part of the Chinese Hall of Life branch um, that uh, I can't say anything about because uh, Hall of Life China, you know, they're not a thing anymore. So, I didn't get to see her either, so I don't really have an opinion. So I just say it, friends. Uh, so, Katana. Katana would be friends with benefits. She's very sweet. Um, but I would say that she'd be, like, you know, a good friend. Um, and then, uh, you know, have some benefits on the side. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, now, the next one um, is another really big one, which is Coco. Um, I have to say, Coco, you'd slap a ring on the face. Coco is excellent. People love Coco. And her sudden graduation broke the hearts of many. I mean, it really did. Uh, I was sad for Coco as well. Uh, she's doing great still, you know, uh, which is good. It's good to see her still streaming, doing things, you know, as Quezon. You know, who, who she was known as previously before Coco. But um, she's wonderful. I gotta say, excellent VTuber 100% of the way. Um, now, the next one is Watame. Best sheep girl. <laughs> I, I do love Watame. Watame's fun. Um, and uh, she got that sheep power when she sings, that's for sure. <laughs> she, she's she got it going on. Uh, but yeah, I'd take her out for a date or two. She, she'd be fun. Now, Toa's next. And uh, Toa's hot damn, man. Like, Toa has like a deeper voice. And when she sings, it's so good. Like, I love listening to her sing. Like, And she does like a lot of like... Um, you know, shooter games, like, uh, so if you're into, like, first-person shooters and stuff like that, she's good at that, too. But, yeah, Toe is really good. I, <laughs> I enjoy her. I really do. Uh, the next one would be Luna, and I would say Luna is definitely friends of benefits. I mean, she's a cute princess, and, you know, um, she would definitely be one that you could game with, have a good time with, and then, uh, some beneficial things on the side. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she, she's great. Uh, I do, uh, really enjoy Luna. She, she does a good job. Now, the next one is Artia uh, from Hall of China. Now, I don't know much about Artia either. <laughs> it's kind of the, I, I, like, a lot of these Chinese ones I didn't know much about. I never really saw them. Uh, so I don't really have an opinion on Artia. Then uh, Rosalind's another one. She was part of the, you know, Hall of China 
uh, yet again, I don't really have an opinion of her because I, I didn't really actually get to see her, so I can't say. And then the next one right here is also uh, Doris. Uh, and yet again, uh, you know, Hollow Life China, I didn't really get the opportunity to know anything about this one either. So I don't have opinions other than I just be friends with them. That's about as far as I'd go. Uh, so the next one is, uh, I, I, I'm probably going to butcher this because I always say this wrong. Um, I, I, I owe fee. I, I think it's how you say it. I don't know much about her yet. I've been looking into her a little bit. She's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so far I just say friends. Uh, Muna, I've seen a bit of Muna. Muna, <laughs> she's pretty funny. Um, I do like how she can be calm one minute, and then like the next she can rage. <laughs> it is kind of funny, actually, <laughs> for uh, Muna. Uh, I, I would say I'd take her out for a date or two. Uh, we don't want tables to be flipped. <laughs> but next one would be Risa. And uh, Risa, I'd say friends with benefits. I mean, <laughs> you know, she'd be hilarious to be around. I mean, she makes a lot of, you know, nut jokes. Because, you know, she's a squirrel. And she's uh, nutty. But, yeah, uh, she's pretty cool. Now, the next one is Lammy. And I have to say, Lammy is up there. Slap a ring on the finger. Lammy is so adorable. Like, <laughs> I, I've always liked little Snow Elf. I mean, Lammy is cute. She's fun. And, uh, you know... Like, whenever she plays horror games, because she can't play horror games, she's terrified of them. Yeah, it was uh, something to see her try it. It was definitely something. So, uh, now the next one is Nini. And uh, Nini is adorable. Uh, I'd say under hot damn. Like, she is, man, like, uh, she's so cute. Uh, and she also, a uh, cool note was uh, she actually was in an anime recently. I haven't seen the anime, but I've seen the clip. And, I mean, you can spot it because of the voice, but, you know, she's cool. Now, the next one is Botan, and this lioness, ladies and gentlemen, you slap a ring on that finger. And she, <laughs> she is good. Uh, she does a lot of first-person shooter stuff like uh, Toa does. So, if you're, like, uh, into that, you know, really cool. And uh, Botan, <laughs> I like how laid back she is. She's, like, very, very calm. Probably one of the more calm uh, VTubers. Like, I, I really like how laid back she is. Now, um... Next one is Eloe, and um, I didn't really get to see her, sadly, because um, when she started, um, you know, she was she was around for a bit, and then she quit uh, not long afterward. So, um, and there was, like, a lot, I think it was, like, uh, no, I'm not 100%, but I think it was, like, mental health issues and stuff. It's kind of sad why she quit, uh, from what I've heard. Next one is Polka. Polka. Slap a ring on that finger. Polka is great. Um, she's very, very, very kind. But <laughs> she could be nutty too. But you know, it's like in a fun way. She makes it entertaining. Um, and uh, but yeah, Polka, she's great. Um, if you really like uh, some uh, pretty funny stuff from her, because I like when she's blunt too. She's really good at it. Now, Calliope Mori, slap a ring on that Shinigami's finger. I'm serious. She can come reap my soul any day. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, you know, here's the thing. I'll say this. I'm not really much into rap. Like, I kind of like uh, some artists like uh, Biggie Smalls, for example, um, and uh, I like Eminem. But uh, she does good with it. Like, uh, she's someone that I can listen to rap and uh, find amusing. She's good. And she's pretty good at, like, uh, just coming up with the raps on her own. She's great. Slap a ring on that finger 100%. Now, next one is Kiara. Uh, she's got the spice of fire. Kiara is fun. Um, she really is. Like, <laughs> KFP, man. Oh, it's that's a funny, funny joke, too. Like... I, I really like Kiara, um, and she knows how to make her streams interesting. Uh, she knows how to keep you uh, really on your toes to things. She's good. Uh, she's definitely one that I'd go after. Now, Ina. Ina, I would take out for a date or two. Ina's cool. Like, I really like her art streams. Her art streams are fun, um, and she's really solid at, at drawing. Like, I, I love it. Um, she's like, she knows what she's doing. She's definitely a good artist. I mean, then again, a lot of the Hollow Live EN ones are, are very good artists. Then again, a lot of them are in general that I've seen do art, so I'll give them that. Gargura, I'd take her out on a date. Gargura. <laughs> I, I love how goofy she can be. Like, that's probably the one thing that really um, is fun with Gura is she makes her streams hilarious. She can be edgy sometimes, too, which is great. And uh, she's been very supportive of uh, the Gen 2, um, you know, EN. Like, she's really been helping the English uh, Generation 2 a lot, and it's really sweet. I, I do like that. Uh, Amelia. Amelia's good. 
<laughs> Amelia I'd take out for a day or two. Uh, Amelia, she's hilarious. Uh, I really do like it whenever she rages. <laughs> That's probably the funniest thing. She'll rage at games, and man, oh, she she got that game of rage really going on there. It's absolutely hilarious. Now the next one is Courage Ollie, and uh, Ollie, oh, this zombie idol, she's crazy. <laughs> but but uh, Ollie's fun. She's a load of fun. I remember when she debuted, uh, and uh, I was like, man, I was like. She, she's hilarious. I mean, she she was uh, really loud, but you know what? It, it was endearing. It was fun. Uh, like, uh, I really like Ollie. She she makes hers uh, very entertaining. Now, Anya's pretty cool. Uh, I've seen her a few times, um, and uh, I, I've seen her, like, the, I think the first time was when uh, she was actually streaming with Gura. I think that was the first time I saw her. She was pretty cool. Uh, pretty nice. I'd say she's friends. Like, she's not bad. Uh, now, the next one is Rene, and... Um, Rene, I remember when she debuted too. Uh, her and Ollie were the ones I remember that debuted, like uh, the day of. I, I remember when they debuted, and uh, uh, Rene's pretty cool. Um, I would say I'd take her out for a date or two. She would be nice. I know she has like, um, what was it, um, brud streams sometimes, talking about like the food that she's got. Uh, she has pretty interesting taste in food. Uh, that you know, so I'll give her that. She's cool. Now Iris is the next one. Uh, Iris, I'd say she'd be friends with Benefits. Uh, she's pretty cool. Um, she she can do some pretty fun streams. Uh, her singing is very good as well. Um, so she's talented as well as you know like a lot of these other idols from what I've seen. Um, and Iris makes it very entertaining. So I'll, I'll give it to Iris. She she would be a friend of the benefit for sure. Now uh, the next one is Sana. Now uh, I've seen a bit of Sana. Um, I would say friends benefits for sure. Sana is uh, she's interesting. She, she's pretty fun. Um, she does uh, some pretty good streams also. So, um, you know, we'll see where uh, more of the Gen 2 uh, English Hall Live go. And, uh, you know, hope the best for all of them still. Uh, now, the next one, this one really took me by storm, which was Fauna. <laughs> Fauna, oh, God, when you're a Yandere, you get me. Like, every single time, you win me over. And <laughs> I was like, Fauna, I was like, you got me Yandere. <laughs> she acts sweet. Then it's like, oh, no, she's actually Yandere. And it's like... Oh, God, you know what gets me going. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Fonda's definitely a slap of a ring on that finger 100%. Uh, now, the next one is Crony. Uh, Crony is fun. If I had to say where I'd put Crony, I would definitely uh, put her as a... She's got that spice, that fire. Her voice, she would do good for advertisements. <laughs> like, and there's been a joke about that. Um, and uh, But, yeah, Crony, uh, she's cool. Very narcissistic. Because <laughs> she's all about herself, which is pretty funny. But uh, I, I've been seeing where people have been like making her break lately. <laughs> but uh, Crony, uh, definitely a, a really good one, uh, a load of fun. Now the next one is Mume and Bales. So let's talk about Mume first. Mume, uh, man, you know she is uh, introverted, but uh, I will say it makes her very endearing because. Mume is blunt. <laughs> and what I like about Mume is, you know, she will tell you straight up things. She doesn't care. <laughs> That's what I love about it. I would slap a ring on her finger because Mume is adorable. She's hilarious. She has a good sense of humor. She is comical. Like, I mean, really. Like, I love how she'll just, like, make jokes out of nowhere. Like, just, she just rolls them out there. And uh, whenever it comes to, like, sick burns on people, she's good at it. Like, Mume is hilarious. And I enjoy her. Now, you know, Bales, or Bay, as she's, you know, called, uh, Bay. <laughs> um, but uh, Bales, she's got that spice of the fire. She uh, was great, too. I love how she's supposed to be the mouse of chaos. <laughs> and, uh, oh, she can be chaotic. But, um, yeah, uh, Bay, she, she's great. I, I like Bales, too. So, overall, this is my list of all of them, uh, you know, you can let me know if you're a fan of Hollow Live. Let me know which ones you enjoy. Um, because, uh, you know, we all have our favorites for sure. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, there's a lot of really good ones out there. I mean, they're all great in their own way. And, uh, you know, everybody has their favorite for sure. So, uh, you know, and I've been following Hollow Live for a long time. I've enjoyed it personally. That's just me, though. Um, and, you know, it's it's good entertainment. It really, It's better than the damn Twitch thoughts. Because they actually are entertaining. You actually get a good game out of it. It's fun. 
You know, they could joke about themselves, too, which that's fun, too. You know, they make it entertaining for everybody. It's great. Love it. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, better than the damn Twitch thoughts. Like I said, I, I don't care to watch Twitch thoughts. But uh, I'll give it to Hollow Life. They make it fun. They make it interesting. And, God, are there so many memes off of it. But, anyways, as always, I want to thank you all for your questions. It's so much fun to always answer them. Uh, fun to hear from all of you. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to have content going up later in the day. Um, so expect it. we got a few videos to go over. But if you have any questions for the next Q&A, please let me know. Um, I would love to answer them as always. Uh, so ask me whatever, and I'll be sure to do it in the next Q&A. And I hope all of you enjoyed it as much as I do, because I always love these Q&As. They're always so much fun. Uh, we'll get back to regular schedule. I'll try to get the next Q&A out uh, sooner next month. Hopefully there won't be any complications. But anyways, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today. And remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow could always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And have yourselves a good one out there, everybody.